Durward Swanson served in the Air Police in the Pacific Theater in World War II. He is a survivor of Pearl Harbor and fought in the Battle of Midway. Uh, these questions were developed by the Veterans History Project team. You may decline to answer any question you're not comfortable with. If at any point you want us to stop recording, please let us know. Um, during World War II, what branch of service did you serve in? I was in the Army Air Corps. I went in the Army Air Corps and then they converted it in 41 to the Army Air Forces. Okay. Uh, what was your rank? When I was discharged, a tech sergeant. Where did you serve? In Hawaii, in the South Pacific. Why did you pick the service branch you joined? <laughs> That's a long story, but uh, I just finished high school in Dublin, Virginia, 1939, and my, I went back to Georgia and me and my school sweetheart were supposed to get married, and I had a riff with her that night. So the next morning, I went up at the recruiting office at the post office in LaGrange, Georgia, and they said they had one more vacancy in Hawaii for Army Air Corps if you was, had, your, had a high school diploma, so I took it. Uh, where did you go for your basic training, and what do you remember most about it? Well, I bought part of it at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, under Colonel Full Buddy Colonel George S. Patton, then, and from the rest of it I got at uh, Wheeler Field and Hickam Field over in Hawaii. What do you remember most about it? Well, like the old saying was back in every day over in Hawaii was like Sunday on a farm back in the United States. So we had a good time, enjoyed everything over there. I had freedom of the after you was, uh, three months, you had a special privilege pass. And you could go anywhere you wanted to. When you served in World War II, uh, where did you go after basic training? I was at Hickam Field all the time. What do you remember about arriving in Hawaii? Well, they had uh, the, the, the hula skirts and all and the divers. They, you throw pennies off the ship as you come in there and they'd dive to get them. When we first got in there, it uh, docked at Honolulu and they took us out to the base. Um, what was your assignment? Well, I was in charge of security when the war started, when uh, December the 7th hit us. I had uh, eight motorcycle men under me, and I was my job was to keep uh, their base secure there. Uh, did you see combat? Yes. What battles were you involved in? Midway. What kind of casualties were there? Were there any casualties in your Oh, yeah. There was a crew of 10 on the B-17. I was on only three of us come out of it alive. Tell me about a couple of your most memorable experiences. Well, I, I would say December the 7th when the Japs hit us there. I'd been on security all night and just had laid down across my bunk and Harry Albright, one of my motorcycle men, come hop running through hollering, get up, get up, the Japs are bombing us, the Japs are bombing us. So he didn't have to say it twice. And I went down to jumped on the motorcycle and went to the gate and I was missing my buddy. I said, where's Lloyd at? And they said, we don't know. So I jumped on the motorcycle, started back up and here come a Japanese plane strafing at me and I just laid my motorcycle down and dove under a car, which I knew that was it later was the wrong thing to do because if he'd hit that car in the gas tank, I'd have been gone. But I found Lloyd standing up there in the middle of the ball field hollering, cussing the Japs and had a BAR in his hand. I said, get on this motorcycle, boy. I took him back to the gate. I saved his life that morning. That earned me the bronze star. Were you ever a prisoner of war? No. Um, if you were, were you awarded any medals or citations? Distinguished Flying Cross, Purple Heart, and Bronze Star. How did you get them? From work I'd done in the plane and on the ground. How did you stay in touch with your family? Well, that's there was the, a lot of scams going on. 
there was some people come by out at Hickam Field there the morning right after the bombing was over and says, give us five dollars and we'll notify your parents that everything's all right. But they never, the mama never did hear nothing from them, that she didn't know nothing till after the War Department sent her a letter that said I had been wounded and that uh, they were sending me back to the States. Hmm. What was the food like? Good, good. Of course, we had some chicken that was packed back in 1918, but it was still good. <laughs> what kind of supplies did you have? We had just about everything we needed over there, except uh, when I first got over to the islands over there, all we had was 14 B-18s, one B-12, and 34 P-26s. That was, a, of course, the Navy had some fighters over there, but that's all we had. Then uh, B-17 started coming in, and then the P-40s, P-39s, P-38s, P-47s started coming in. Could you tell me about something that you or someone you knew did for good luck? Uh, could you tell me about something that you or someone you knew did for good luck? Did knew for good luck? Mm -hmm. Well, my school sweetheart sent me a four-leaf clover over, and she says, this is a long story, so I won't get into it, but anyhow, she says, when you come back to the States, I want you to come see me. 25 years later, we got married, but she married my best buddy and my brother and his wife, and my first cousin took her to get married, and my dad's first cousin, Justice Peace, married him. But uh, it's a four-leaf clover she sent me, and I, I, that might have brought me through December the 7th and Midway both, I don't know, but I still got it. Where did you travel while you were in the service? Where did what? Where did you travel while you were in the service? Just from around the island. Well, I was on DS over at uh, the island of uh, Kauai, Barking Sands, for six months. This before the war started. But most of the time was on the island of Oahu. Right. Would you tell me about your experience with the Navy? Any humorous or unusual events that happened? Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's one happened December the 7th there. Bombs was falling, strafing and everything, and a guy laid down right close to a tennis court, and there's a bomb fell close to it, and it, there was some lumber laying there, and it just put all the lumber over on him. And we thought he was dead, but we pulled the lumber off of him, and boy, he got up and took off just in his shorts on. So it was kind of some, it was some humorous things happened, but it wasn't humorous right at the time being there, though. Do you have any photographs? Oh yeah, I have some. Um, what are the photographs of? Photographs of me when I was on uh, duty, it, it, my motorcycle man with me. And then I was, uh, I had a photograph of me when I first went, in the, when I was in the service. I had come back to the States for three months to Chanutville, Illinois, and went to AM school. What did you think of the officers or the fellow soldiers? Good. We had a good bunch of officers. We lost our commanding general in the Midway battle, Clarence L. Tinker. He was a major general. He was commanding general of the 7th Air Force. Did you keep a diary? No. What do you recall about the day your service ended? The days when my service ended? Well, they sent me back to four different hospitals in the states. I ended up in Kinder General in Memphis, Tennessee. And they turned me back to duty and put me in charge of security out at Millington Air Base there. And I asked the captain out there, I said, I'd love to go back to Hawaii. He said, we'll put in for it. And they turned me down, would let me go back to Hawaii on count of my leg. And I turned back into the hospital. I played cat and mouse with them for about eight to 10 months. and. I had over 400 points. I could have got out any time. I told the captain, I said, I'm just going to get out. I've through fooling with them. He said, no, don't get out on points. It'll make them give you a disability discharge. I said, I want an honorable discharge. He said, that's an honorable discharge, so that's what to give me a certified disability discharge. Mm -hmm. Did you have any 
tell me about the close friendships you had while you were in service. I had one guy very close, Miss Albert J. Lloyd. We was just like brothers. And then we lost one. Another buddy of ours, he was from uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. James L. Strickland, he got cut half in two with machine gun fire. Do you continue any of those relationships? All my buddies is gone. But I'm the only survivor left of the air police and all in the, our crew. Captain Tula piled on the B-17. He passed away two years ago. Did you join a veterans organization? I belong to three of them. American Legion, VFW, and Disabled American Veterans. What kinds of activities did your post or association have? Well, I was national president of Pearl Harbor Survivor Association for two years. I've been a member of it since 1962. We formed it in 1958, and at one time we had almost 20, I think 24, 25,000 members. Now it's down to under 4,000 members left of us. What did you go on to do after, as a career after the war? I went to college at TPI, Cookville, Tennessee, got my degree in civil engineering four years. I built dams all over the United States, firehouses, bridges all over, 40, 75, 85, 95. Did your military experience influ influence your thinking about the war and the military in general? Yeah, absolutely. Do you attend uh, war reunions? Beg your pardon? Do you attend reunions with your uh, fellow? Oh, yeah, we yeah we have, uh, we got uh, the state chairman of Pearl Harbor Survivor, McLeod. He lives at Powell, Tennessee. I talked to him last night over the phone. How did your service and experience affect your life? Well, I, I done what any ordinary American citizen would do to defend this country. It'll never be free. Freedom will never be free. It'll always be a price paid for it. And that's what I would just wish these, these protesters would quit protesting and leave the man alone, let them do their job and come home. Is there anything you would like to add that we have not covered in this interview? Just keep America free, and it, just like a man said one time, said it could never happen again like it did Pearl Harbor, but it did happen 9 11, and it could happen again. Well, thank you for um, coming. That's all the questions. Yeah. But uh, thank you for coming and taking part. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes.